Hello everyone, thank you for clicking this video. Um, I just want to give a shout out to the amazing support that me and Neon have seen on our channel. We've steadily been growing our viewers. Right now we're at 85 viewers on July the 1st, and I think that's amazing. I love how this community is building, and not only building as a supportive viewership, but also as an interactive one. So I just want to give a shout out to the amazing viewers who are loyal and keep watching us. Uh, we couldn't do this without you and we wouldn't be able to do this without your support. So that being said, today is July the 1st and for those of you who, you know, live under a rock, this is Canada Day. But not only is it a special birthday or an ordinary birthday for Canada, it's a special birthday because this is the big 150. So, in order to properly celebrate, um, I've got a bunch of fun facts about Canada, so you might learn something interesting and think, hey, Canada isn't all about saying sorry and drinking maple syrup. That being said, we still do that stuff, but I thought I might spice up this video a little bit because it's just some footage that I have, um, and the footage itself is in no way related to Canada or how nice we are. But it was just something that I had kind of in the vault, and I hadn't planned on releasing it anytime soon. So with that being said, let's get started with our little fun facts about my home and native land. Uh, that being said, my parents immigrated from Scotland, but I was born in Canada. And I'm proud to call myself a Canadian. I love this country and what it stands for, and a lot of people say like, oh, Canada's boring. Oh, Canada doesn't do anything. Canada is, you know, this sleeping nation. And I don't think so, because Canada is known for their citizens being helpful and polite and just kind in general. And I think for a country and its people to have that kind of reputation is amazing. Uh, because I've traveled outside of Canada, and when people hear that I'm Canadian, it's not like, Oh, you're Canadian? It's like, oh wow, you know, your people are so nice, or I visited and was helped. And to have that positive kind of connotation and stereotype towards us is something that we've worked really hard to establish and something that we're extremely proud of. Um, that being said, let's start getting into some of these facts. There's a lot of them that I, myself, as a Canadian, didn't know. Some of them I'm not surprised. Um, but hopefully you'll pick up one or two fun facts and in the next party that you're at you can say Hey, did you know this about Canada? And boom! Life of the party, you'll get all the chicks or dudes. I mean like everyone will worship you. It's just fun party tricks or fun facts to impress your friends or strangers. I don't know. So Canada has 36 million people in total which doesn't seem a lot considering that Canada is the second largest country in the world and because of the low number we have the world's fourth lowest population density per square kilometer and the reason for this is that a lot of our landmass are small islands way way up north and these land ma masses are almost habitable they are freezing cold, covered in ice, like that's the stereotypical idea of Canada, that it's freezing your butt off cold. So because there's so much landmass up there that's not being populated, that's why we have such a low density compared to how large our country is, because Canada also has the longest coastline of any country in the world. So. It's kind of surprising to be the second largest country but have such a low population, especially when considering the population of America, you know, who's right below us. People always say Canada's America's hat. But, you know, that being said, 31% uh, of Canada is taken up by forests. Unfortunately, I'd like this number to be a little bit bigger, you know, uh, with development and whatnot. I'm not surprised, but at the same time, considering how cold um, our land is, 31% might be a pretty decent, sustainable number. 20% uh, of the world's fresh water is in Canada, and Canada has more lakes than all other countries combined. And that's just 
once again, kind of an astounding fact. You don't really think about that, especially when looking at a map. Our lakes are very small, but very numerous, and that's why we have so much. And I know that a lot of our fresh water is water that's being bottled. Um, so it's, it's cool to think that we have so much um, natural resources that we can uh, kind of you know, focus on and uh, share with the rest of the world. So, in terms of wildlife, we have 2.4 million caribou, which also are known as reindeer. Yes, reindeer are actual animals. They're not fairy tale make believes. I know there are a lot of people in the world who think that reindeer are myths, just like Santa Claus. Nope, they're both real. Reindeer are actually animals that you know, live in Canada, that's another reason why I should visit Canada, because it's a magical place full of snow and maple syrup and reindeer. Um, and there's 15,500 polar bears uh, in Canada, which in total there's only 25,000 polar bears in the whole entire world. So the fact that 15,000 live in Canada, um, it's quite astounding. You know, we have over half of the world's population of polar bears and unfortunately you know because global warming a lot of the ice is melting they're having trouble sustaining their habitat so we canadians i think are more aware of that fact because the polar bears are in our country and so it's being more reported and like the information is easily more obtained um 77% of the world's maple syrup is made in Quebec. I, I knew that Canada was a big maple syrup exporter, but I didn't know that Quebec itself was the main uh, province to export maple syrup. And so in Canada, we have provinces which are like giant states compared to the US. We only have a very limited uh, number of provinces and, ter and territories. Um, Canada has more donut shops per capita than anywhere else. Kinda not surprised because of our Tim Hortons obsession. Uh, Tim Hortons is a coffee and donut shop. Um, basically an American or a Canadian version of Dunkin' Do Donuts. And recently they've started expanding into the UK which I think a lot of people are really happy for because Tim Hortons is also um, quite inexpensive, is, is the word I'm looking for. It's it's good food for a really low price. So, you know, if you meet a Canadian and they're not addicted to Timmy's something or Tim Hortons coffee or hot chocolate, then they can't be like a true Canadian. It's just not allowed. Um, macaroni and cheese is the most purchased pra packaged grocery item in Canada. We love our freaking macaroni and cheese and craft dinner. Almost as much as like poutine. Like holy cow, KD is like the shit. You know, it's the most amazing thing in the world. And if you don't eat it at least like twice a day, I don't know what kind of Canadian you are. You know what I'm saying? Canada produces 1.5% of the world of food only consumes 0.6%. Now I don't know if that's because of our like population compared to our land mass or if like just in general we are more sustainable in terms of our harvesting of foods but th that's that's cool that we're producing you know and and consuming less than half of what we produce. Um, So the people of Canada, more than 42% of Canadians are Roman Catholic and 23% are Protestant. Now this fact, this is one of the big ones that, that really I want to put emphasis on because when I hear this fact, this is what makes me extremely proud to be a Canadian. You know, it, there's a sense of pride and patronism when I hear this, so this fact. Eight countries, only eight, 
are deemed to be less corrupt than Canada. Considering A, how young our country is, and B, our population compared to smaller countries, eight countries are deemed to be less corrupt. Like that just, wow. You know, I hopefully we'll be number, one day we'll be number one, you know, that no countries are less corrupt than Canada. Um, but I hear this and it just, it brings a smile to my face and it just, it's kind of like, holy cow, we're, we're doing something right when we say that, you know, we're trying to be a country that is looked at at a higher standard and some in a country other countries can try to aspire to like we're not bullshitting we're not saying a country oh we're nice and great and then you know doing a bunch of horrible shit behind our back we don't have a clean history that's for sure um mistakes have been made uh considering the treatment of native or the aboriginals um the treatment of japanese citizens during the wars like we don't we're not goody two shoes we've had our own mistakes and we're still trying to this day to rectify them but the fact that we're a country that tries to own our mistakes and tries to learn from the past to progress in a future i think that's something that is kind of embedded and taught at a young age that you know we're trying to fix this it's a slow progress but it's progress in itself. Um, 42% of the Canadian population have a higher education qualification. So 42% go to college or university. This is another fact that, um, you know, it's nice to know that we are seeking to learn more, that we're more and more of our population is, is trying to achieve a greater, greater education um, because collecting that information through schooling I think helps us become less ignorant and more accepting of things that we may not understand or fully grasp and just makes us I think more informed and generally kinder people because we may not necessarily agree with something but we're not going to be outright dismissive or rude against that, you know? We're accepting even though it's not our personal choice or preference or whatnot. Like, we understand where the other person's coming. This is another big fact right here. Um, that as a Canadian citizen and a woman, it, it puts a smile on my face. It, pride is definitely something that is apparent when i read this canada is the best g20 country in which to be a woman the best you know and like to read that i know there's still problems once again canada's not perfect we're not all rainbows and sunshines but we're working on that and to know that our progress is being recognized it's comforting and rewarding and just kind of like holy crap you know we're, we're trying to do something right and it's affecting our community and doing wonders to our population so now now that we got like the important statistical facts kind of out of the way we're gonna go with the more goofy ones you know that make Canada really really unusual um you know and just the first ones that I'm going to um list off are places in Canada with the most bizarre and unusual names um including three places called hearts content hearts delight or hearts desire you know we have some like some really odd places you know especially considering how how big it is um the first place that kind of <laughs> kind of makes me chuckle is sober island 
in Nova Scotia, which has its own brewing company. So Sober Island, which brews alcohol. Like, how redundant can you be? How, like, <laughs> it just makes me chuckle that Sober Island is, you know, shipping out a bunch of alcohol to, who knows, the rest of Canada, the rest of the world. Nova Scotia, also fun fact. I hear this a lot because my parents are Scottish. Um, Nova Scotia actually means New Scotland because a lot of the uh, settlers uh, coming from Canada uh, for that region in Nova Scotia were from from Scotland. We've we've got a lot of different settler groups: the French, the English, um, the Scottish, or the primary groups. So they have the biggest uh, influence on our uh, history and development as a country itself. The next place, which is once again kind of like, what? Is Blow Me Down Provincial Park. I mean, they really don't need the down part. They could literally just call it Blow Me Provincial Park. I think that would be far more catchier and far more inappropriate. But, you know, just come on down to Blow Me Down Provincial Park, you know? Uh, we got Big Beaver Saskatchewan because Canadians love their beavers, if you know what I mean. Wink wink, nudge nudge. And of course, one of the most uh, universally accepted foods, Bacon Ridge, Manitoba. Because, you know, if there's one thing Canadians like opposed to their maple syrup, their macaroni and cheese and their poutine is bacon. Come by chance, you know, that's a great name for a place. They just happen, happen upon come by chance. Uh, Mushaboom, Nova Scotia, uh, which was inspired by a song. Mayo Yukon. We have a remote town in the Yukon called Mayo. And it's got one eatery. Why? Why would anybody name a remote town Mayo? You know, like this... <laughs> huh, what do you want to call this town? Oh, I got some mayo on my shirt. Why don't we call it Mayo? We got Goobies, because, you know, Mayo's such a great name compared to Goobies. And of course, um, the amazing Dildo. We have a place called Dildo. Because why not? Like, some people- I don't- mm, don't understand. Wawa in Ontario, which is also known as the land of the big goose. Oh my god, geese are the most terrifying things in the world. You're like, oh hey look, it's a giant mutated duck thing, and then you go close and it starts hissing at you. It it's a freaking bird that hisses at you. And it will attack you. So if you come to Canada and you see a geese or a goose or whatever, do not approach it because it will get aggressive and it will attack you. And your friends will laugh and take videos of you being attacked by this giant murderous thing. And it's not going to be fun. And you're going to be scarred for life. You're going to have to go to therapy. And God, it's just, it's a scary ass thing. I'm going to tell you that right now. Uh, Ontario, which is the province that I currently live in, also has Crotch Lake. Because, you know, if Dildo wasn't bad enough, we've got Crotch Lake. And also urine in Saskatchewan. Why is everyone so inappropriate when, when naming these places? <sighs> Ridiculous. We also have Balls Creek in Nova Scotia and Balls Falls in Ontario. People here really like our balls, apparently. It's just, it's just an observation I am making. Um, we also apparently like body parts. We have eyebrow in Saskatchewan, elbow also in Saskatchewan, and finger in Manitoba. Why? Why would you name a town elbow? Like. I want to know the thought process going into naming these towns. I really do, because I'm sure, like, the people naming these towns 
have to have been like brilliant philosophers. I shall call this name Eyebrow. We also have Climax in Saskatchewan because if balls aren't enough, you know, that's cool. We have a place um, called Head Smashed in Buffalo. Um, that's oddly specific and probably has a great story behind it, not gonna lie. Head smashed in Buffalo. Whoo! Um, Dead Man's Flat. And that, whew, that sounds great. Real, real catcher. I want to go there, you know. There's Stoner BC. Stone, cause, look. This was made before the whole, like, hey, yo, marijuana, let's make it leap. No, he's just like, you know, stoner. We also have a town with exclamation points in the town name. Because, like, I mean, the town's in Quebec, so I'm not even surprised. Because, like, it's Quebec, it's the French. He's like, oh, 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 sacre bleu. That's terrible. Um, it's St. Louis de ha ha. Because in case, like, ha isn't enough, it's got to be capitalized. And with an exclamation point. Ha ha! And now, the place I'm going to butcher, like no tomorrow. Um, the longest place name in Canada is in Manitoba. And it's a lake. And holy crap, for such a long name, for such a tiny lake is ridiculous. But, here we go. <clears throat> Peck watch na mako squab ye pin wakin lake. Oh god, that was horrible. It is like freaking 30 letters long. I, I don't know. I don't know, man. I. It's crazy. This name, um, it's. The translation, um, for this lake is where the wild trout are caught by fishing with hooks. So, I mean, it's a very, like, straightforward. Um, name for a lake, you know, it's very informative that, oh, they're, the, the trout here are caught by hooks, not by anything else, but that's just such a long name, like, it seems very overly complicated, <laughs> you know, it's kind of crazy, uh, Canada stretches over six time zones, like, holy shit, that's a lot of time zones, I, I wouldn't have guessed that. Uh, places to to check out in Canada. We have a massive snake orgy in Manitoba. That's I'm sure. Who, if you've got a fear of snakes, don't go don't go to Manitoba, please. I, I feel like that'd be a terrible thing for you to do. Um, we have a historic Viking village in Newfoundland, which you know I think would be pretty dope. You know? I think that would be super awesome to go. We have the longest- okay, here we go, we got world records here. Um, because everybody loves a little bit of humble bragging, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. Canadians don't do that enough. You know, you hear Americans always saying how America is the best. Well, nah, nah, Canada's got some shit too. So here we go, we have the world's longest recreational trail. The Trans-Canada Trail, aka the Great Trail. We have the world's longest street, um, which is technically, it's not officially true anymore, but Young Street in Toronto is, it just goes on and on and on. So like, I wouldn't be surprised. There's a lot of debate, but I, I think we still got it. I'm gonna pretend we still do. We have the longest beaver dam in the Wood Buffalo National Park, because you know, Canada and beavers. And we have the longest beard on a living man. I know. Why? It is 2.495 meters long. I don't know. This world record was, um, is being held by a man named Swan Singh in British Columbia. And he got the world record in 2008 and it's still upheld. So if anybody wants to grow 
a super long beard and, and beat Canada, don't do it. Please, we, we need this. And last but not least, I'm going to do inventions by Canadians because everyone's like, oh, what's Canada done? Canada's done a bunch of shit. Alright, we're cool. We invented basketball. But fun fact, Canada didn't technically invent basketball. It was a Canadian who invented basketball, but it was invented in America. So it was like a co-op, like, joint project between Canada and America. Because we're best friends, right? Just don't annex us, like, in Fallout 4, please. Um, we invented the Bloody Caesar, because we like alcohol too. Um, the goalie mask. Not even surprised. Uh, poutine. Once again, it's like our national food, other than maple syrup guzzling. Uh, the snowblower and snowmobile. Are you really surprised? It's fucking Canada. Like, hello? We, we kinda need this shit to survive. Well, I mean, we don't, because we survived this land before that. But nowadays, like, snowblower comes really handy. Um, we invented the telephone and the walkie-talkie, because we love talking to our homies, you know? You gotta, you gotta know what what's up, what's the 411, what's crack a lacking. Um, the egg carton, the electric wheelchair, alright, and the electric organ. Also alright, we got 5-pin bowling. And for people who don't know, 5-pin bowling is a Canadian invention where you bowl with 5 pins, not 10, and the ball is much smaller. And people are like, whoa, 5-pin, that sounds stupid. Nah. Nah, it's cool, because unlike 10-pin bowling, it actually takes accuracy and skill to hit all the pins. You could hit a corner pin in 10-pin bowling and still get a strike. I don't know, man, that's just... it's crazy. Um, we invented instant mashed potatoes, because, like, hello, instant mashed potatoes. You're welcome, world. You're welcome. Um, the Java programming language... Canadian boom shakalaka. We got the paint roller. We have we invented peanut butter. Mm hmm. You're welcome. For all those who love peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, you're welcome. We got the prosthetic hand, specifically a five fingered electric hand for children, which is great. We got standard time and the best invention, trivial pursuit. Because Canadians love games filled with useless tidbits of information, just like this video. So hopefully you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about Canada and the amazing things that uh, make us an amazing country. Uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed learning all these useful facts that will make you tons of friends. And we'll see you in the next episode. Bye bye